Mercy and peace may be multiplied unto you. This is Apostle Elliot. wanted to take a moment to give you a word of revelation regarding a term that we find in the scripture, not only in the Old Testament, but the New Testament. And oftentimes we may not even put a lot into understanding this particular term, but the word that I'm talking about is vanity, vanity. Uh, and uh, one of the first references I want to bring to your attention in the Old Testament, because there's technically about five different words for vanity that are used, but I want to bring to your attention the difference of each of those words, and then I will touch this word in the New Testament. Uh, so the first one I want to bring to your attention is when one turns to Job chapter 7, verse 3, the scripture says, So am I made to possess months of vanity and wearisome are appointed unto me. He says, I am made to possess months of vanity. Now in that we may ask the question, well, what does vanity mean in this particular verse? Well, the Hebrew word that is being used in this particular scripture is shav, which means emptiness. It means falsehood. It means desolation. And when we talk about desolation, especially when it comes to an individual, it means for them to be devoid of a spirit, being devoid of spirituality that has character, this being devoid of spirituality that is guiding them. So it puts them in a place of worthlessness. So in this, what the writer says, what Job is implying, he says, I am made to possess months of emptiness of desolation, being devoid of the spirit or the character uh, that I should have within myself leading and guiding me. I've allowed myself to be in a worthless place that I'm not doing anything or bringing any value according to the character of the Lord God. Now, second one I want to bring to your attention is referenced in 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 15. And second part of that verse says, and they followed vanity and became vain and went after heathens round about them. So what is the word vanity referring to here other than the Hebrew word hebel, which one in the, if we may say in the literal sense, it's speaking towards the vapor of breath or the vapor of life that one breathes. But once again, in its in-depth revelatory meaning, it means emptiness or to be unsatisfactory. Okay, so in that, if I if I can substitute that within the verse to give you a, a little bit more clarity, it says, and they followed. Uh, emptiness or stuff that was unsatisfactory and they became vain. The more they followed something, the more it articulated who they became. If I'm following after worthlessness, then I become what I follow after. It's kind of like the cliche as we say, uh, birds of a feather flock together. And I remember one of my uh, former bishops used to say, don't let your friends prophesy your future because if they're not going anywhere, if they're, they're in a place of emptiness and worthlessness, then what happens is you morph into that same thing. So this is what's really being implied here with Hebel. They followed after something that was unsatisfactory, unworthy, a place of emptiness. And then what ends up happening is they become that thing that has surrounded them or become what's led them. Now, another, another word that's used in the Old Testament we find uh, in Job chapter 15, verse 35. And the scripture says, they conceived mischief and bring forth vanity and their uh, belly prepareth deceit or within them they prepare to do deceitful things. So then based upon this verse, then what does vanity mean here? Well, the Hebrew word that's used is avin. And avin means trouble or wickedness uh, or iniquity, the unrighteous things that we think and create and perform. So now with that understanding, the scripture says, if I could read it to you again, they conceived mischief, unrighteous things, wickedness to bring forth their iniquity. And iniquity is the physical action that one carries out their sinful or unrighteous thinking. It's one thing to think a thing, but it's another thing to perform it in this reality. So in this vanity right here is referring to those wicked things or unrighteous things 
or troublesome things that one physically performs. Third term, that, or excuse me, fourth term that we find in the Old Testament regarding vanity is in Psalms chapter four, verse two. It says, O ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will you love vanity and seek after leasing? Selah. All right. Now, in that, based on this verse, then we must ask ourselves, what does vanity mean here? If it's not the same as Avin, if it's not the same as Hebel, if it's not the same as Shab, well, the Hebrew word that's used here is rayak, and it means to be empty with no purpose. It means to be idle, and being idle is still performing idolatry. Idolatry is the practice of worshiping something that does nothing. So when I do nothing, then I become uh, an idol in my actions, which still speaks to idolatry. This speaks to me having no purpose. It speaks to me having no function. So when I understand rayak to mean uh, no purpose, or to become idle, just standing still and going nowhere. Then the verse says, O ye sons of men, how long will you, uh, ye turn my glory into shame? How long will you love having no purpose and seek after leasing? How long will you enjoy being in a place that you ain't got no purpose in your life? All right, this is what riot means. Now, fifth term that we find in the Old Testament is referenced in Isaiah chapter 44, verse nine. In Isaiah 44, nine, the scripture says, they that make a graven image are all of them vanity and their detectable things shall not profit. All right, so what, what, what is this verse really saying? Uh, well, the Hebrew word that's used here is tahu, tahu. And it means confusion. It means unreality. And it also means formlessness. And, and the reason it articulates it as formlessness is for those uh, that are familiar with Genesis. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, it says, When the earth became uh, without form and void, uh, the word there uh, for form or no form is tahu. So, so in this, with no form or with nothing being of a constraint to keep things in order, it causes things to be out of order or causes things to be in a place of confusion. So in that, this then becomes what the prophet Isaiah says in 44 verse nine, he says, they that make a graven image are all of them in confusion and they're practicing something that's not of reality. All right. It's something that is not real and it's causing them to be put into turmoil or into a place of confusion where they don't have order. Now, if I look at this term uh, that, that we're talking about with vanity in the New Testament, in the New Testament, there's one particular word that we will find for the word vanity and it's metaetes. And metaetes means what is devoid of the truth. All right. What's and anything that's devoid of the truth is in a place of being perverted. It's in a place of being polluted. So so in that, not only is it devoid of truth, what else we find is in the root word of metaetes is mateos and mateos means useless or having no purpose. So, so in this, what we can understand from the Greek word for vanity, it means to be devoid of the truth based upon being useless or worthless. Now, we find this particular word used in two scriptures in the, in the New Testament significantly. In Romans 8, verse 20, it says, for the creature was made subject to vanity, or the creature was made subject to being devoid of the truth, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope or in expectation. So in that is saying the creature or human beings were made in this physical form devoid of the truth in order for the expectation of the truth to be put inside them. Okay. 
uh, uh, in the same turn, we, we, we find in second Peter chapter two, verse 18, the scripture says, for when they speak great swelling words of vanity or words that sound good, the words that seem to be flamboyant, but yet they don't have any truth in them. It says they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean or true to escape from them who lived in error or in delusion or lived in a life that was wandering, that was like a vagabond that had no guidance or no direction. So, so in this, as we can understand this vanity, once again, as far as the Greek is concerned, is one being in a place of, of being useless and having no purpose and being devoid of the truth. Now, the only other scriptures that you will find that you, that you can uh, locate this word vanity in the New Testament is also in Ephesians chapter four, verse 17. Uh, uh, and once again, as I've already articulated in second Peter two eighteen. but with that being said, I pray that I've given you a wealth of understanding regarding this word vanity in its correct context and what's the depth of its meaning so that we can understand the source, especially when we cite scripture from the Old Testament to the New Testament uh, with using this word. So with that, I pray that this blesses you as you continue on your divine destiny in the Lord through Christ Jesus and Christ Jesus alone. So with that being said, Amen, amen, and amen, and may the Lord God bless you as you continue on your journey.